Well, here we go, let's get those wheels out on the road. It may get dusty, but that's the way she goes. We'll build some greasy old cars and drink our AGD. Hey, don't you know, it's Barkley Bill. All right, so Josh, what are we doing today? Fucking beetle shit. <laughs> Okay, so I brought some more parts. I got a switch panel, a tachometer, a fuel pump, fuel filters. Uh, I did have some pieces for the steering, but we're going to change what we're doing there. I think first plan this morning, what are we doing? Let's go rip some uh, Galaxy wheels off so we can figure out wheel spacers. Because I think that might be our plan, is uh, just use the Galaxy rims and the back tires this year. We'll have to get new rubber for the front because the fronts are pretty weather checked and terrible. But See if they fit. I paid, I think, 300 or 450 bucks for the rims and the tires that are on them. And we might as well use up those back tires before they weather check to shit anyway. Yeah. So, first plan is we'll go to the Galaxy and we'll rip some parts off. See come back in here, rip the tires off this thing, and we'll try and fix a fi figure out wheel spacers. Alright, so, we got both front tires off the car. And as you can see, the weather checking is quite horrendous. But, first... They're good looking rim and tire. And I told Josh as uh, payment for renting him these rims, he's got to get rid of the black paint and make him polish aluminum again for me. I don't know how he's going to do it, but that's his problem, not mine. I'm paint him bright green. Oh God. All right. So the poor galaxy is up on blocks. It really belongs in the trailer park now. Mangled bumper, rotted fenders on blocks. But I mean, it's still a six silhouette. It's still a good looking car that Josh has to fix for free. Good luck. <laughs> you get what you pay for? Yeah. Alright, so now, got the rims in, we're going to get these fancy, fancy factory beetle rims and tires off. We'll pull the cavy rims off the back, and we'll get things kind of figured out. I know the bolt patterns are completely wrong to even try to put on, but we need to try and figure out if the offset and everything on these rims it's going to clear on the fenders and if we can turn or if we got to get wheel spacers because when we order the disc brake kit we can actually order it undrilled and put whatever bolt pattern we want we can run the standard four bolt pattern we can run the porsche pattern or they come pre-drilled for a chevy pattern but if we can run the dodge ford car pattern then these rims fit the slicks fit all four corners are the same the trailer has the same size bolt pattern like we only have to carry one spare. In theory. In theory. But we'll keep ripping these tires off and we'll get back to you when we're ready to test stuff. So the offset of the front rims is a little excessive, but it looks really cool. And that is nothing compared to the back. Granted, on the front we can set them on the hub pilot because it's a bolted wheel. So they've got to go in roughly an inch from where they are. But like that's that's impressive looking <laughs> so we were talking about wheel spacers i don't know if we got to get spacers we'll have to test a slick here if we could get hubs and rotors in the right bolt pattern we'd be good oh these rotors are nice yeah they're in good shape nothing to do with bag driving cavalier because we'd have to run a one inch at least spacer to be able to hide those enough that you could put the rim on so we gotta look at that. But let's grab a slick and test a slick on here now that we've got no wheel on. <laughs> that looks good. Although, I definitely have to run spacers with this because that is getting pretty close right there. All right, that's getting a little tight. So this would be roughly centered on the hub right there. And it has to go in roughly an inch, inch and a quarter. Turn the wheel and see if we hit anything. Of course, this is without any weight on it. How much room you got? Quite a bit. And they probably run a shorter, narrower tire anyway. I think we'll have room. Even with weight on it, I think we'll have room. I mean, we might throw some rocks, but it's not going to this year anyway. Nope. I think Josh is getting back to work on his scoop. I'm going to rip one brake off so we can have uh, a good look at it. And we can take the hub and the rotor to the machine shop so we can get our rear adapters built. 
And now that we know our front should work pretty good, I'll get the kit ordered for the front end, probably Monday or Tuesday, and we should be good. But let's get to work. Kyle's making all that noise over there. Hey, hi Kyle, what are you doing? Hi Kyle, what are you doing? Huh. <laughs> I'm working on lights. Alright, so, Josh has done nothing because he's doing other things. Uh, back brakes are all stripped out. It needs calipers, hoses, hubs are screwed, rotors are screwed, pads are done. But uh, in the meantime, we'll send one rotor and hub to the machine shop so we can get the adapters built to match the rims. Then we can get the rear tires mounted. I'm going to get all the brake parts ordered, hopefully tomorrow, so I can get that done. I pulled the tie rods out because I was planning on using those heim joints and reusing the original tie rods, but it's a bitch metric thread. So screw it. I drilled these out to half inch straight and I'm just going to get heim joints for both ends and a rod in between so we can adjust them and lock them out and we will set them. The inner ones we'll put roughly where the ends of the rack were because we kept the rack and I can measure from the old mountain holes right here back to where the edge was of the rack where it pivoted so it should make the bump steer essentially like stock. Not that it matters too much for what we're doing, but it would be nice if it's good. So I gotta clean everything up here and order a bunch of stuff on Monday. I'll order the disc brake kit possibly Monday. I gotta talk to Josh, see what he wants to do there. But we're gonna get the blank rotors and just get them drilled and either do knock-in studs or thread-in studs. I'll get a bunch of studs ordered. And then yeah, once I get all that stuff, I technically could get the brakes done. So that would be one thing done. Now, I think I'm gonna go pull the shifter out of that old truck and see what I gotta do to fix it and make it work for a four speed. And then we can figure out what we need for cables for that. All right, I'm not sure how much you can hear me with this stupid wind, but uh, we're gonna go out to this old truck and see if we can get the shifter out of the cab today so that I can start figuring that out too. I'm just trying to keep myself busy with little jobs because Josh has got other shit going on in the shop today. He can't really focus on his personal stuff. Man, this thing, they were hard on it. it oh, door doesn't even open. There may or may not have been a bullet that went through that freaking uh, shifter too. So we're gonna have to see. I'll see if I can get in this thing. Well, I haven't managed to get the door open yet, but uh, the bolts were hanging out of the bottom. So I just brought the old crackhead specials over and removed the bolts. Now it's a matter of trying to get in the cab to pull the shifter out, which hopefully comes out fairly decently. I can't open this door, but I can see the shifter in here. So it might be a matter of digging for gold and then going in through, well, what used to be the windshield. All right, so all I did was pull out the pail and then it came out really nice. But that looks like a bullet hole, so We'll see how good a shape it's in. Hopefully I can salvage it somewhat. Well, I got the cover off it and sure enough, there was a bullet. So I gotta see if I can straighten and repair this material, hopefully, and see if I can get the uh, mechanism for a four speed automatic for this instead of the three speed. And I think it's just a matter of taking these legs and shortening them and it should fit in the car okay. All I gotta do is buy a B&M cable and we should hopefully have a working shifter in theory. All right, I've gotten everything apart. I've straightened out this piece. I straightened out all the pieces in this. And the last piece I have to do is this one right here. So this is supposed to be attached to right there. So all this was split when the bullet hit. I've knocked this flat again. I actually have to notch this out, bring this metal back down to here, and then we'll have to tack it and grind it smooth. And then put it all back together and hopefully I can remember how it all goes. And then I gotta see if it even works for four gears or if it's only three and I have to change pieces or if you even can. But one thing at a time. All right, so it's all been repaired here, cleaned up. <clears throat> So now it's just a matter of putting it back together and it's all 
it was four rivets in here, so I had to chisel the old ones out. So I'll get that re-riveted together, see if I can figure out how to put the handle and everything back together on it. <clears throat> and then we'll uh, see, hopefully, if it works. And it appears when I look at the teeth on the indents that it can be a four-speed automatic. So we'll have to see once we get it put together and moving. After a lot of head scratching on how I took it apart to figure out how to put it back together, the uh, it all functions. Okay, so that's park. Pull up on the pin. Reverse. Or no, that's still park, sorry. Pull up on the pin, that's reverse. Neutral first, or sorry, drive. Three, two, one. Two, three, drive. Neutral, back into drive. We need to park in, in reverse and everything, so. Surprisingly, I was able to fix the bullet damage. Um, this cable doesn't really slide it just kind of twists and binds and it's all caught up in there so it'll need a new indicator cable and a new indicator mechanism I don't know if that comes with the top plate or what and then whether we just cut this down to mount in the car because I took the extended stand off the bottom of this I don't even know where I put it over oh, right here you may or may not end up using part of this bracket that comes with it for the truck assembly to set it up higher but in the meantime we have a ratchet shifter so we can pretend we have horsepower now all right so I'm just kind of roughing out fuel tank and where I'm mounting the fuel pump and stuff and my outlet I should have done a straight one a straight one there's a hole right below where the drain plug was if I'd have put a straight fitting out that would have been done uh, not a huge deal though I'm just gonna take the tank back out and cut the hole open a little bit bigger and then uh, I think I can mount the pump up in the front <clears throat> behind the inner wheel well here there's a big pocket in there I think I can mount the, the suction filter and the pump in there then there's a hole to run the fuel line through and into the tunnel and then I can put the pressure filter in the bottom of the tunnel and then it's just solid lines all the way to the back and then a solid line all the way back to the front for the return fuel and then that should be done. So I'll get the fuel tank pulled back out and then I'll show you the hole I gotta make bigger. All right, so here's where we welded that bung in, or that fitting into that uh, drain plug bung. And here's the hole it actually lined up with. I don't know how well you can see it in this light, but I'm just gonna cut this hole oval a little bit each direction. And then uh, I'm gonna see if I can put the return through this hole over here or through this one right here, which is probably where the fuel line used to go through. And then I should be able to actually mount the fuel tank in here and uh, that part's done. And then start building a bracket to mount the fuel pump. So I'll keep going on this. All right, there we go. The hole is substantially larger. It's nothing pretty, but it doesn't have to be. I just got to get these wires and stuff held up out of the way so I can stuff the fuel tank in. And then I can actually put it in and mount it. And uh, oh, that's lovely. And then <clears throat> I can uh, start plumbing in the fuel system. I'll lift it back up. All right, well, the fuel tank's in it. We just had it up in the air, eyeing up where we're going to put the pump. But I think we got to leave it for a little bit. I think we got to run coolant pipes so we can figure out what space we have for what. Uh, I had a better look at how the factory brake lines are done. And it actually comes into the cab. So we're going to come in the cab like it did factory over to the sill. Follow the sill to the back. And tee it into the brake lines at the back. Because that's how it was factory. So that's how we're going to do it now. Um, transmission cooler lines. will probably run with coolant lines. But we're going to have to see once we get to that point. So we didn't get a ton done today, but we did get some stuff done. So we'll catch you next time.